Hi, I am Allison Risk from RadioPotato.com. I'm here with Ben Soli at Grocery on Home, the new uh, private music venue in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, so Grocery on Home is a really a residence. It's a living room that probably holds about 40 people. It's a very intimate experience. So tell me, what is it like the first 10 seconds before you go on stage? What's going through your head? And by stage, I mean by the front door. Yeah, well, right now we're by the front door. Sometimes we're on a very small stage in here. Um, but first thing that you notice is there's no fourth wall. There's no element of surprise in the grocery. You just kind of walk on from the crowd and, and begin to tell your stories. And because of that, it encourages you to be a lot more honest. Um, it encourages you to be a lot more sincere. And I think that's one of the things that people really like and crave about this venue is that um, is that you get an artist on a different level. You know, they're not using any of their big stage tricks. They're they're here and they're singing to you and with you, and and that's really nice. I think it's really cool about the music enthusiasts mm -hmm. that come here. It's pretty amazing. And in 2009, and I'm sure you've talked about this a lot, but you uh, are from Kentucky and. You uh, rode 330 miles from Kentucky to Bonnaroo on your bicycle with your cello mm -hmm. and with all of your gear. What made you do that? And did you feel like Lance Armstrong by the end of it? I didn't feel like Lance Armstrong. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You must that have felt pretty fit, though. I, I was pretty fit. I got pretty strong. I remember walking back into the house after that tour, and my wife took a look at me, and she was really kind of caught off guard because I looked so different. I'd lost a, a good bit of weight and I was just tan and a lot stronger, but um, I felt much more like Forrest Gump, where I just wanted to keep going. Like I didn't want it to end because it felt so good to ride the bicycle, and especially after overcoming the fact that it was really difficult physically for me to do. But, yeah. How did you do that? Well, you just get, you just get on your bike and ride. I, I wasn't a cyclist before that. I wasn't uh, particularly fit as a cellist. Um, but I, you know, wanted to do this because I wanted to slow down and be a part of these communities. I wasn't trying to pull some, like, green stunt or be sustainable necessarily. I just wanted to slow down um, because I, the pace of touring had been so superhuman traveling around the world in planes and trains and automobiles. The bicycle seemed like a nice limitation. And, um, and I just decided I was going to go do it and got on and rode. It was really hard the first four or five days and then... Your body just kind of accepts it and gets strong. How long Stops did it reserving take you? energy. It took about 10 days. That's crazy. With, with shows along the way. It was a music tour, you know. We played in all these different towns around Kentucky and connected them, places that I would not normally play as, a, as an artist in this country. So I was reading up on you, and it said that you are classically influenced folk with leanings of R&B and soul. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you've got a much larger mission than just playing music. How does that all come together with grocery and with what you're doing now? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's all about one of the oldest art forms, of course, which is storytelling. And um, us musicians have gotten very used to and almost like out recorded music centric. And for me, it's about the greater story. It's not about just the music that you're putting out or the songs that you're writing. It's about advocacy. It's about the things that you care about in your community, whether that's livability infrastructure or protecting... Um, you know, your cultural heritage in the mountains of Appalachia, like all those things are important to me and I try to tell that as a, as a holistic story as an artist by doing bike tours, by doing albums to raise awareness about things, doing just simple fundraisers. Um, try to be community oriented. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. So when you write, do you consider yourself a cellist, a singer, or a songwriter first? How does music come to you? Um, I think again, more than anything, I'm trying to tell a story. So that's what I would consider myself first. And I try to use whatever instrument and sound uh, tells the story best. A lot of times that's the cello because it's such a versatile instrument. But sometimes it'll be guitar, sometimes it'll be just percussion, uh, sometimes it'll be piano or harp, as the case may be. You know, you just, whatever moves that story along. So. I saw um, Amos Lee, and I saw this video of him, and he was um, performing at the White House. Mm -hmm. And there was this man right in the front, and he was losing his mind, crying mm -hmm. when he was singing. I mean, just losing it. 
And you've got a very, um, you've got a melancholy tone to your voice. It's very crystal clear, but it's, it's got a lot of soul and depth. What is it like for a musician when somebody is freaking out over whether it's the sound of your voice or if they're crying or reacting that way? It's got to be cool in one way, but, you know, if somebody's really losing their mind, yeah. how do you keep performing or what is, what is it like for you? Um, that's a good question. I've never been asked that before. And it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a fairly intimate thing, but it's also just one of those things where that song obviously is not yours to them. It's their song. And they have something uh, that is, they own it in a different way than you do. And you're not going to, you're not going to really understand the depth of that. So the best thing to do is just respect it and just like let them have their experience. That's got to be amazing though. Like how do you not break? Um, Say, are you okay? <laughs> Which is freaking. I don't know. I've never had anybody like lose control. I've, I've had people that, you know, had really emotional reactions. But, yeah. You know, I've never had anybody start convulsing because of the beat. And I've, <laughs> and I've played some crazy places that where people might have come over. I bet, I bet. And I'll, I'll ask, I always ask this of everybody, but what are some little known facts about you? Um, I don't know if they're little. Yeah, um, I used to be a dancer in ballet. I, uh, what other things are little known about me? I don't know, I tell my story like so holistically that there's not a lot of things that are little known about me, but what else would it be? I don't, I don't know. I don't think about that very often. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think about what people don't know about me. I just think about what I'm trying to, uh, you know, tell as a story. Yeah. I can flip bottles like cocktail. That's my little known fact. Oh, yeah? So some people have other things that maybe they have I mean, I, 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 I would say if, if I was going to compare something <laughs> to that, most people, you know, every, some flowers will come in in an arrangement, and, and I, that's how I worked my way through high school. And, and earned the first bit of money that helped me buy gear for music as, uh, as a florist, as yeah. a wholesale florist. So I did a lot of flower arranging. I can cut flowers really fast and do it. So if you need any <laughs> things, it's bensoley.com yes. if you want to, you know, um, if you need any flowers cut or some cello music. <laughs> I always wondered, in a high school, were you like a band geek or was it cool to play the cello? I would say geek, yes. Uh, I did, but I was a geek about all things. I was a geek about um, theater. I loved theater. I did a lot of it. Did musicals. I played a lot of cello. I um, made a lot of art. I did. I was. I was a pretty artsy geek. I would say I wasn't much of a tech geek. Well, you've turned it into a nice little career for yourself, but I, I really thank you for your time. I, I can't wait to see you play. Finally, I've had your music for quite some time, so it'll be fun to actually see it live. Yeah, let's well, do it. Well, thanks again. Absolutely, thank you.